host team, the Albany Empire, and uh, I want to take a quick second just thank everybody for being here. Congratulations, Carolina. Great season. Grateful to have you guys here. Of course, congratulations to our guys. Very grateful to have us here. Um, and everyone watching on live stream, we appreciate you as well. We've got fans all the way from Cleveland here today to check this out. And um, I mean, really, let's congratulate both these teams for all the hard work they've done so far. Congratulations, guys. Very, very good. But we all know what it's about, right? The reason we're here, if I can get my lovely empresses to come and help me uh, show you guys the, the real reason, the real star of the day, the National Arena League Championship Trophy. We've got these uh, lovely ladies. Let's go ahead and meet our coaches. I'm going to start with the host team coach and also because I have to share an office with him, so you know, you get it. Our head coach of uh, the Albany Empire, Tom Manas. Thank you for that roaring round of applause. <laughs> Much appreciated. Welcome, guys. Glad you're here. Glad you got here safely. Looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, very much so. Um, first of all, uh, to my team uh, that we competed this year and did something that's very difficult to do, to finish first place uh, two consecutive years in a row. Um, I'm very proud of them for that accomplishment. To be in this game uh, is a testament to our whole organization, from our ownership, Mike Porta, down to our coaching staff and our, obviously our players, which are the integral part in all of this. Uh, we're very grateful for the opportunity to compete against a team that's been a formidable opponent this year for us and very tomorrow, obviously. Um, but in that process, we hope to be competitive and show the country the difference between the NAL and all other indoor football leagues that the best athletes play in this league, both teams. Okay. So with that, thank you again to everyone for coming, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Thank you. And now, head coach of the Carolina Cobras, Josh Reginello. We did Coach Rents. That's what we all know, yes. Coach Rents. Appreciate everything, um, both sides. Uh, it's going to be a great show tomorrow night. I know that for sure. Um, you know, to my team, um, I appreciate everything we've done, been through this season. Uh, we're in this opportunity because all of us together. It isn't about one one person. Um, talk about being together in family. We had our ups and downs, but we're here. This is what it's all about. Um, this trophy right here, we already have one, um, just like them, and so we're hoping to bring another one back to Carolina. Um, talk about the matchups, previous, you know, all the records and stuff go out the window, to be honest. Previous games don't matter. It's all come down to tomorrow night. Both teams are healthy for the first time all across the board, and, and we're excited. Um, old ways. Um, it's very important, not just for us as an organization, but to bring the trophy back to Greensboro as well. So, appreciate everything. Look forward to tomorrow. All right, now the, uh, the man who's going to host us and uh, make sure we know everything we need to know it is the man, the myth, the legend, Steven Chitola from the National Arena League front office. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, congratulations on uh, hosting your second championship game in two years. There's a lot of credit that uh, goes to that with an organization for the players and the coaches. All right. So uh, thank you everybody for coming today. Um, uh, I really appreciate everyone, the turnout, the teams, the media, and everything like that. Uh, we have a, it's definitely merited. There's a big game tomorrow. Uh, it's the biggest game in uh, our season, and couldn't have uh, asked for two better teams to compete tomorrow. So give a round of applause to all the players here and the coaches that will be playing in the game tomorrow. I also want to... Um, Get a round of applause to uh, every player out of all the teams in our league this year for putting out one of the most competitive seasons in NL history. You know, um, I was working with the league in 2020, uh, August 2020, and uh, I got to be honest with you guys, as a, a father, an employee, a football fanatic, our league and a lot of leagues and a lot of businesses had no clue if this would even happen. 
2021 season, how many games we're going to play, are we even going to have teams, are we even going to be able to have markets, are we even going to be able to have front offices that can sign players, you know? Uh, 2020 brought a lot, uh, a lot of changes and a lot of obstacles for a lot of teams, and um, I want to credit uh, the, the city of Albany, because as a market in our league, they dealt with some of the uh, toughest um, obstacles. They dealt with, as a state, they dealt with some of the toughest restrictions. And I think it's a, it's a huge credit to the city, the fan base, and the organization to even be here today to be hosting another championship game in the city. As well as uh, just say how grateful, you know, as a league employee to see this league grow after a huge pandemic like that. And even going through 2021 in a shortened season to be fortunate enough to get to travel to every city in this league this year and see fans back in the stands, see sponsorship growing, seeing big name players coming back to play for these teams, seeing big name coaches uh, working for this organization. I think it's a big credit, not only to the team, but to the league uh, to show the stability that we can handle obstacles that people have never seen before uh, in their lifetime, like the global pandemic uh, that we had in 2020. So I'm just extremely proud and just want to mention how important it is and uh, to never take games like this for granted or to take teams or leagues like this for granted because this is definitely special. And I think uh, a lot of credit goes to Albany for, for being here, for, for toughing it out in 2020 and 2021 and, and putting on two great competitive seasons and as well as the Carolina Cobras for, for always being a uh, competitive team in our league, making the playoffs. And this is actually now I think their third championship game that they'll be competing for. So it's a huge credit to both of these teams and their, their organizations. Um, let me go ahead and just introduce everybody that we have on this panel. I don't think I need to because of, of just the credit of the value of these players that we have um, and how well they performed this year and, and past seasons. But I'll start with our visiting 9-5 and five Carolina Cobras with our head coach, Giles Resinello, who, who spoke earlier. Next to him is the uh, quarterback, Jonathan Bain, playing for another championship title game. And then uh, DJ Myers, he'll be playing in tomorrow's game as well. So if any media has questions for, for either of those guys, I'm going to do a league panel, uh, some questions that we've had prepared. When I finish that, I'll open the floor to media if they want to address anyone who's standing here. And then following that, we're going to open the floor to the media that, wanna in, that wants to interview any player or coach that's in this room. They can do so in the breezeway yes, and also the lobby. Um, but like I said, let me get through the panel and finish up my uh, introductions. Uh, to my right, I guess your left, is our, our head coach, Tom Inasa, the 8-4 and four defending champion, Albany Empire. Um, and then next to him is wide receiver Darius Prince and Dwayne, Dwayne Hollis. Oops, sorry. And Dwayne Hollis. All right. Um, let's just get into it. I got a question for the defending champion head coach. Coach Manas, it's a dual question, so I'll let you, I'll let you uh, take some time. How does it feel to bring a second championship game to this city in your second season as the head coach of the Albany Empire? And is there any pressure knowing that a host team in the NAL has never lost a championship game? Yeah. That's fine. That's good. Um, first of all, like I said earlier, to do it twice is humbling because so many things got to on the place. Both of them. You, you've got injuries, you've got players that leave for other ventures, you've got a bunch of different things that happen. Um, I think it's a credit to both teams just to be here. Um, being here is, is the first step in your goal, uh, obviously winning a championship. So from that aspect, it's humbling but also very gratifying to know that you put something together that works. Um, as far as pressure goes, nah. We're going to win. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my next question is for our visiting team head coach, Coach Rez. Um, Rez, one year ago, the Cobras were not here. Uh, they struggled early in the 2021 season, but managed to pull off an incredible playoff run getting to the NAL postseason. Um, this year, 2022, you cruised into the playoffs, was the first team to clinch. And now you got the Cobras back into a championship game. I think a lot of people want to know, just as a head coach and a general manager, what's the number one thing you did differently in 2022 that you may not have done in 2021? Well, um, it's a great question. Um, from, there's a few people here 
on the team that were involved with last season's team and just the atmosphere and just the environment from last year to this year is different um, is the first thing. Uh, coming out of COVID, you know, it was hard as anyone, you know, they had to deal with it, finding housing and, and different things like that, and meals for the team, and, and no one, every, everyone's business suffered from, um, from COVID. So it was hard to add some of the things that were typically known for each season of having housing and meals and sponsors and those type things. So to be able to, you know, this season really pretty much started for us um, in last August. Um, as soon as the season was over, we hit the ground running with some things. And um, Coach Anson Yarbrough, our DC, um, he's pulled to, uh, hang, take, take over from last season. You know, we talked about some of the things we wanted to do as far as players and different direction with some stuff um, that we weren't able to do last season. Um, so that's a bigger overall picture for us um, for where we're at now. Uh, from a coaching staff, um, adding much more coaches than we had. Uh, coach Fuller with his experience, um, being a head coach in this league, being in the championship games, was important to get him on board with us. Um, just all the players that came from it, from players recruiting players and coaches recruiting, it was a whole total team effort across the board. Um, we really, really didn't have that last season, and, and that's a main reason why we're here in the championship game. Thanks, Coach. All right, let's go with uh, Jonathan Bain. Bain, uh, you played in a championship game before um, with the Jacksonville Sharks, now you're with the uh, Carolina Cobras. Does it feel any different going into this game? Here, here, come on. First of all, I appreciate all y'all. Congrats to y'all. Big dance. So that's what everybody shoots for at the beginning of the year. And like you said, it takes a lot to get here, uh, not just on the field. Actually, most of the stuff's off the field. You know, you got to get right. So congrats to everybody here. Uh, but as far as the feeling, no, it's the same. You know, as a competitor, you wake up each and every day and want to be the best. Uh, and in order to do that, you got to play games like this and win games like this. So uh, uh, I wouldn't say the feeling's any different. Uh, just as hungry as the first day I ever picked up the football. And uh, I think that goes for a lot of the guys in this locker room and what kind of got us here to this point is uh, just having a lot of similarities amongst us as a group. And uh, just made things easier, you know. Uh, adapt and overcome has been a big slogan for us this year, uh, just with anything on the field, off the field. Uh, just got to make it happen, you know, and that's what, uh, you know, tip my hat to my teammates because through it all, uh, through all adversity, you know, they've always rallied. Uh, even with me going down with an injury, the way they rallied behind me and kept me going, and the way Malik Henry came in and, and, and got us to this point. You know, it just shows the it speaks volume on the team and the unit that we have here. So, uh, feeling confident as ever as I was in the first championship, and uh, looking forward to bringing one back home here tomorrow. Okay, buddy. Man, you must have done this before. <laughs> no question. All right, uh, next question I got is Dwayne Hollis. You're going to be competing against Jonathan Bain tomorrow. Uh, what is the biggest, I guess, goal of points for you? to do what you've done all season long, dominating on defense and uh, shutting guys like Bain down in a game like this. Um, honestly, it just, it, <laughs> well, it just um, comes down to just fundamental. Just, um, we played them three times. They played us three times. It's just who's going to be best in certain situations. Just, Fundamental, just be fundamentally sound and, and do what you do the best. And that's who's going to um, win this game. Whoever um, comes down and um, there's situations. Yeah. Just, yeah, <laughs> there's situations, but um, just getting off the field on third and fourth downs and things like that, and just making plays when you're um, able to make plays. Uh, next question I got, speaking of playmakers, Darius Prince, my question for you is, what are you looking forward to most tomorrow, and who's going to win tomorrow and why? What <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow is just a healthy game, both sides of the ball, man. You know, we all got families back home, so... Just be healthy, have a great game. Obviously, we're going to win. We're the better team we've done it all season, so we're going to win.
Let's uh, humble this up a little bit. I'm going to uh, ask both coaches. Uh, it doesn't matter which one goes first. Uh, you know, we're all competitors in this league, from the front office to the coaching staff to every player to equipment managers versus equipment managers and medical teams versus medical teams and who's going to compete. At 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock tonight, we're going to find out who was the best in the league at our award ceremony. But um, I guess my question to both coaches is, what is one thing that you respect the other coach on? You guys have been competing against each other for more than one season, so I'll let you guys pick who wants to come up first and just say a few words about the other coach. <laughs> Boy, this could be fun. <laughs> um, Rez and I have a healthy uh, love-hate relationship, I think, um, in the sense that whether admitted or not, at times, I do respect Coach Rez very much, actually. Um, one is his background, his that him and I have a commonality in you know, some of that stuff, but also the fact that he's a competitor. Um, we talked about like the football thing, um, what ball we're going to kick, and it's kind of funny because when we played him, our kicker had his broken leg. We wanted to kick the white ball, and I got called every name in the book by Rez, and now he wants to kick the white ball this week. So I get to call him every name in the book this week <laughs> on social media. But it's because I do respect you, brother. And like I tell all the coaches in this league, there's only six of us right now. Um, we're a small fraternity out of 300 some odd million people. There's only six NAL coaches. And at the end of the day, um, as this league grows, that fraternity is going to grow but it's going to grow with the core of coaches like that are sitting here today as well. And I think it's important that in the off seasons we communicate, we make this league better, we make our rules better, we make our players better, um, we collaborate for the goodness of the league while also staying competitive. Okay, and that's the big thing. When Jonathan went down, we actually had a prayer group for him. Okay? Because you want to play the best all the time. Okay? And I don't do that. I don't say that because you're all here. That's God's honest truth. We literally lit candles for him back home at my church. Because he's part of why we're all here today. Okay? So I can be competitive with y'all, and I will be, and I'm old school. And I'm the only old line head coach right now. So I act like an old lineman. You can appreciate that, big guys, um, where the other guys may have more finesse and more polish. But at the end of the day, my passion for this league, my passion for all of you, regardless of the team you're sitting on, is that we continue to keep getting better and look after this game that we all love so much. Because we could all be doing something else right now. And good Lord, I don't want to be digging ditches. I don't want to be working in an office. I want to be right where I'm at. 62 years old and get to wear gym clothes to work every day. All right? And if you want a life in football, this is a great place to have a life in football and indoor football. And you can have it for a long, long time. And I'm proud of it. But again, for Coach Rez, um, you know I respect you. You know I have a great affinity for this team. And that's probably why we banter so well together. But um, I wish you well. Hope you lose tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have fun. Thank you. Well, um, first and foremost, uh, this is my first season as a coach not being a coordinator offensively or defensively. So uh, I respect Coach Noss and the fact of taking some things away from him as being the head coach and having coordinators and um, trying to step into that role and manage that aspect. Wasn't easy for me at first. Um, still kind of getting used to it. Uh, 
but uh, a lot of it has to do with the staff around me, uh, just everything we have going. You know, sometimes we fight like brothers and just through, throughout the whole mix. Um, but that's why you know, we are what we are. Um, I would be dismissed um, for my team to, to agree that the better team is to our right. Um, we do have the better record by default. They are the number one seed, and that's okay. We were the number one seed throughout the most of the season, and we let it slip away, so that's our fault. But we are 3 0 against you, and we don't plan on being 3 and 1 after tomorrow night. So um, it's very important for us to bring this trophy back, not just for us, but our city, and everything else has been in support for us since day one, since 2018 for us. Um, so no disrespect to all of you guys are a great team, but we are the best team. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys both. I've got one more question, and it's kind of breaking my format because this player's not uh, on stage at the moment, but I'm going to try to ask him to come up. It's uh, the former quarterback of the Carolina Cobras, Sam Castronova. I want to ask you, how does it feel to have the opportunity to, to potentially beat your former team? Gave me the opportunity to play, so I'm very thankful for that. But uh, it's definitely, uh, definitely kind of fitting that we ended up playing against each other. So I'm going to get everything we got and try and win this football game. Let's go, Supernova! Thanks, Sam. If that's the toughest thing you got to do this weekend, you're going to be okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to now open it up uh, to the media if anyone wants to address any of the players on the stage or ask a question. Uh, we'll do that for about five, six minutes, or however long it takes, and then I'll go ahead and um, open it to break out where the media can interview any player in this room outside of this particular room. So uh, does anyone have a first question or want to raise their hand? And um, we can go ahead and delegate who answers that question. So It can also be a league official. Perhaps the commissioner wants to ask a question. Or a, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Chris, just raise your voice. Yeah, sure. Uh, so my question is for uh, Jonathan Bain. Big fan of yours for a long time. It seems like it's been a long time coming. So I'd like to know how you feel about this game. You know, going through some uh, adversity the last couple of years. So what's this game mean to you? Awesome. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, I say uh, I'm trying to think of a way to just kind of sum it up. Um, definitely means a lot to me. I'm. Uh, you talk to a lot of guys. Uh, we all jump into the arena game to move on. Right. It's a stepping stone. Uh, this is my eighth season. So uh, I've been here doing this for a while, right? And they call them lifers, right? Your arena lifer, blah, blah, blah. So um, it really means a lot to me, though. It's not a vacation. It's not a hobby. It's not just something I pick up and do in the off season, you know, in, during the summer months. Uh, it's something I put all my time into and always have. Uh, so it, it really is a sweet feeling, man. And uh, especially over the last few years, just kind of my career, really, man, starting even as a kid. Like, we don't have to get into that. But just it's always been a roller coaster. And... Uh, but it, it's moments like these, and these don't come around often. I'm not sitting here saying I've been in this moment a lot, but uh, this is what makes it all worth it, you know. And uh, you forget almost that, like, people use, you know, the, the, the tough times, the struggles that we go through to get where we are. But you know, whenever you're in this, you almost forget about it, you know what I mean? And, and, like, right now, the most I can explain about this whole last week is just being like a kid again, you know. Uh, that, that, you know, that fresh feeling of just playing football. You know, when, we're the last two teams, you know, nothing but respect for these guys. You know, I know most of the guys on the team played with, against, you know, it's nothing but respect to coach and staff. Uh, but, I mean, like Coach said, what, what other way do you want it than to, than to play the best? You know what I'm saying? That's what we all strive. I hope that's what y'all are all playing for. And, uh, but for me, yeah, it is, it's an it's a, it's a awesome feeling. I know uh, it's carried out throughout the team as well. Because, uh, like I said, even through the little adversity we faced this year in my personal uh, situation, I uh, couldn't have done it without the rally of these guys. And uh, the athletic training staff is what I got to tip my hat to them because, I mean, they did some miraculous stuff with me to get me to where I am now. So uh, uh, I hope I answered your question. I could ramble all day. I'm trying to shorten it up because I'm a talker. But uh, I do I appreciate the opportunity. Both sides, again, much respect. Nothing but respect. And uh, let's have a good one tomorrow. And uh, give everybody what they came to see. Any other questions? 
questions? All right, so if there's no other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, relieve these guys and uh, we're gonna do a breakout if any media wants to individually interview any of the players in this room. Oh, there is one. I just wanna make an announcement. I'll, I'll just go ahead. Yeah. The Commissioner of the National Arena League, Chris Sigfried. Hey, this will only be a minute. Uh, first of all, congratulations to the two teams that made this game. We we'll really feel the two best teams that are deserving are here. Uh, but we also wanted to make a uh, little announcement that tomorrow at halftime we will be announcing our eighth expansion team. So we'll keep that information quiet until then. But we're excited about the growth of this league. We're going places, and I couldn't be happier for uh, uh, the Arena Ironman game being back. So a lot of, a lot of exciting news in the, in, the, in the near future, starting with the announcements tomorrow night. Best of luck to you guys uh, tomorrow, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see all you guys at the bank tonight. Also, uh, the trophy will be available here till 3 if anyone wants to get pictures with it, but just please don't touch the trophy. We'll save that right for the winning team tomorrow. Thank you again for everyone who came. Appreciate it, and feel free to approach a player if you want to interview or photograph or anything like that.